Let us open with our candle lighting hymn.
turn now to our bulletin, which has the order of service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgive me and forgive my sin. O my God, merciful Father, I Thank you. 
Hear that, O house of David. Is it too little for you to worry men? Did you worry my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey, and he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land of whose came to you bread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you and upon your people and upon your father's house such days as have not come since the day of Ephraim, the part from Judah, the king of Assyria. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded upon the sea, and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lay us his soul to what is false, and does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek to see the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord our mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Epistle reading is from Romans chapter 1. Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ, called upon the apostles to set apart for the gospel of God for which he promised beforehand, through his prophets and the holy scriptures concerning the Son, who was ascended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the Son of God in power, according to the Spirit of holiness. By his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship, to bring about the obedience of faith. For the sake of his name beyond all nations, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now sing the first four verses of Hymn 357, O Come, O Come, Amen. Thank you. 
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not, until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the Gospel of our Lord. And praise to you, O Christ. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. meditation today comes from Isaiah chapter 7. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, as the sign of the Lord your God, let it be as deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a son. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Amen. During the past few weeks of Advent, I focused on preaching about Christ coming to us. That is, Christ coming on the last day to deliver us from all evils. We want Christ to come to be with us now, so that we may not remain in the pain and suffering of the world. This is a little bit different from the typical emphasis of Advent, which is Christ coming to us in the major, or on Christmas Day. This coming of God to be with us is so that he might take on human flesh and go to the cross for the sake of that human flesh, giving himself up for our salvation. Both at the manger and on the last day, God will be with us, but uh, we might want something different for God to be truly with us. Christmas looks to the past, and the second coming of Jesus looks to the future. So what about the here and now? What about the present? Where is God with us right now? It does not mean much to us, if Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, but remains absent. However, we do know that God is truly present with us. Often in my sermons, I bring to remembrance that the Lord is present in his word and sacrament. Jesus Christ promises to be exactly where he says he will be. 
He is the Word made flesh to be born on Christmas Day. And his words that he speaks, found in the scriptures, give us life through his will. Also, the Holy Spirit washes away our sins with the blood of Christ in holy baptism. And if the Holy Spirit dwells within us, as, what, as also what happens in baptism, then the Holy Spirit is constantly joining us to Christ through faith. And of course, perhaps the most direct way for our God to be with us is for him to make his own flesh and blood present in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. So all of these things, they all are God being with us and delivering us by his grace. Yet this is not always what people desire when they want God to be with them. They do not want words, water, or wine. Or maybe they want wine. But they rather have a living, breathing Lord who will stand by them through all times of trial. The world is not always a nice place to live, and we need someone to uphold us when times are tough. We want someone to be sympathetic to our needs. All our needs, whether they be physical, emotional, social, spiritual. And we know there is grace in the word and sacrament, but we tend to desire more. So this is why God spoke to King Ahaz in the days of Isaiah and said to ask for a sign as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. The Lord knows we desire comfort so greatly that we will let our hopes reach as high as the heavenly realms. And if our hopes be shattered, they fall down to the depths of the earth. The Lord, knowing the hearts of humanity, gave instructions to ask for the full glory of his heavenly kingdom. Yet we don't want to be too presumptuous, do we? We do not want to ask God for what we can grasp by our own hands or for anything too miraculous. This is why I think Haas actually refuses to answer. But it's not the worldly and the miraculous exactly what God directs us to request of Him. The Lord's Prayer, which we, we repeat time and time again, is always asking for everything our bodies and spirits need for life extending unto eternity. You might focus on requesting your daily bread, the things God provides to us for our everyday life. But the Lord invites us to pray for so much more in the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. With these words, we are praying that our Lord in the heavens bring down the heavens that the blessedness of his kingdom might be among us. We are asking that the throne of God on high may be here upon the earth, so we may gather around our King in this world. So, if we are already reaching into the heavens in the Lord's Prayer, perhaps we should not be skittish about asking for the Lord to be with us. And we know that the Lord is truly with us in prayer. If you desire to be with the Lord, then you will find him in prayer. He will always listen to his children in the faith. He is never far off. He is always present in his word. So praying to him with the words he has provided for us in scripture means just that. In fact, when we were praying Psalm 24 just a bit earlier, we are actually having holy conversation in the spirit with our Lord and him actually hearing us. God is with us in prayer. And fundamentally, this is what we want, what we desire, for God to be down here with us. We want a personal connection with our Lord and Savior where we can freely talk with him so that we may request deliverance from every vile thing present in the world, as well as for fixes to all the world's problems. Our grandest wishes for Christmas should not be limited to a new fire engine, two front teeth, or whatever computer game console happens to be available. 
Christmas is about God coming down to dwell among his people, living with them that he might save them from their sins. We should honor the Christmas season by asking for just that. Asking for him to come down to be with us and to live life with us. Now we truly do receive the Lord. We actually do have his presence in the word and sacrament. And we do have the promise of salvation right here in front of us where the Lord forgives us our sins. And we also rely on his promise that he is present where he works forgiveness. So we do have the assurance that God is present, although not exactly face to face with our Lord. And sometimes we feel troubled by this. We can feel alone when we are crying out to God and hear silence. Not everything we pray for will come about. Diseases might not be cured, nor the dead raised. And even the more common things like guidance on certain issues or health and work or in relationships, we might not hear a definitive answer. But none of this means that God does not hear us, and it certainly does not mean that God is not there. God has not spoken directly to the vast majority of people throughout time. Now, the prophet Isaiah, he received the voice of the Lord at appointed times for appointed purposes, but this was hardly the norm for most people. If God, speaking like he did to Isaiah, was the norm, then we would expect to find a few million more books in the Bible named after people. As it stands, there are only 40-some authors of Holy Scripture. But God does still speak. He spoke to the king through the mouth of Isaiah. And the Lord also speaks to us through the written words of the prophet Isaiah in the scripture. It, as, it is just as true today as it was 2,700 years ago. The promise that God would come into this world to be with his people on Christmas Day and deliver them from all the evils in this world this is as true today as it was way back then. When we are concerned about our lives, we can always look to the truth that Christ has come for our salvation and be comforted. We may not have all the specifics we might want. We may not have a booming voice from the heavens like, the, like at the time of Job, nor do we have the still small voice like how God spoke to Elijah. But God continues to speak to us through his word, from his son. It is not about us demanding God be where we are at, but us going to where God promises to be. And since he promises to be with us in his word, in his sacraments, and in the holy conversation of prayer, we will truly be with him in worship. It is here, in these things, that we know God is with us and will remain beside us, even when we feel alone in this world. And when we meditate on the Word of God, we find that Christ says in the Gospel of Matthew that surely He is with us until the end of the age. We know Christ is present with us and with in His church always. He may not be here bodily like he was, and bodily with the twelve disciples, but he is still with us. He will never leave nor forsake us, but always be only a prayer away. We need only call upon him. And in the prayer that Jesus has given us, the Lord's Prayer, Jesus has instructed us to request the Lord bring his heavenly kingdom down here among us. And this will happen. At the end of the age, when Jesus will come bodily. Now, when this will be is difficult to say. After all, when we look to God's word given to the prophet Isaiah, God does not give Isaiah a time frame on the coming of the Messiah. Isaiah does not see a child of promise being born in the manger in his day. Although, I 
Isaiah does see a child of promise born to a young maiden at this time uh, to tell the kingdom of Judah in the 8th century BC that the Lord is with them. But the true fulfillment of this promise, the, the forward thinking of this promise, does not come about for over 700 years after this time, long after Isaiah has gone to meet his maker. So while we do not know all the specifics, we don't know exactly when this will come about, we don't know when we will actually enter into the heavenly realms, we can still say with certainty that Jesus is coming bodily. Jesus himself gives us this promise at the close of the book of Revelation. Not talking about Christmas, but about the true coming of the kingdom. Our Lord declares, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as we sing the offering. God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us praise the Lord. 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 For those 
those who mourn, that in their time of sorrow they would not lose heart, but rely on God's promise that he will never leave them nor forsake them. Let us pray to the Lord. No, I am nicely. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength in his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is really good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith, and, above all, firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us, when, by pouring out his precious blood, he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
May the eating and drinking of the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bless and preserve you in true faith and the life everlasting. Lord, in peace and in great joy. Amen. I invite you to rise as we join together in the post communion hymn. Lord, bid your servant go in peace.
Seeing none, let us conclude with our hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 5 to 7. Thank mm -hmm. you. 